chapter three, the new series from transitioning your athletes from the amateur ranks to the professional ranks. Even if you guys are not in the amateurs and you're already pro, it's perfect for you. This is a developmental system. Ready? Now when we do it, I want you to maul me. So what we're gonna do is show you how you should do whenever you're getting mauled. So he's gonna throw the shot to the body. Boom, boom. Now he's gonna turn the corner and maul me. Huh, rake, body. Good, good. Step around, good. And you'll see as the fight goes on that this is how you approach it, like a pro. Now what we're gonna do is add the maul. That's just the harpoon circuit right here. Ready? Let's get it right. So you're gonna throw that shot. You throw that shot right here. Boom. Wait here. Body. Good. 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 And allow your fighter to just attack press and get used to cutting the ring off. I ain't got a little bit behind me. I want the objective is to make sure when you throw that body shot and you get counter, then you back down. Maul. If you come right there and then you get right there. Just like this. Step around. Key is to make sure that you stay in their chest. This is your safest zone. Remember, whenever things get thick, get to the eye of the storm. Now let's see what it looks like inside of the ring, transferring those mitts to the next level. All right, so now this is where we take what we've done with the mitt training and we transfer it into the ring. This gives them muscle memory on how to perform so what we have to do is we have to take him through a counterpunch circuit. We have to make sure that his defense is on point when he goes into throwing a multitude of combinations in the drills that we've done prior. When you get into the ring, those muscle memory gears have to be intact. So what we're gonna do now is show you one through four tiers of throwing combinations, but I'm gonna be doing a combination throwing He's going to know what's going to come back. So I'm prepping his defensive mechanisms all together, one by one. All right, so here we go. What we're going to do, like I said, and George has to get to the point where he can still throw combinations in bunches. Tier one, he's going to throw a jab, and I'm going to counter it. So you're going to throw here, one, two, three. Step around, pop the jab, get back set up. And he has to keep testing the situation. Throw the jab right hand. Right hand, cut me off. Good. One, three. Good. Throw the jab, block. Good. Jab here. Good. Right hand. Good. Cut me off. Good. Nice. Oh, you can throw to the body. Don't follow me. Cut me off. Good. Make sure that he's cutting you off right hand. Good. Throw the jab. Uh, work. Get down, work. What you want him to do is work. Jam. Get ready for the count. Good. Work. Good. 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 Jab. Getting used to throwing punches. Good. One, three. Right hand. Good. All right. Good. Throw the jam. Good. Work. Time. 
making sure that he knows where to get to. He's in front of you, not chasing, staying in your chest. And that's how you get the body, lower body going. Make sure he throws and you counter him. That's your objective. So when he throws, but also it's imperative that you keep him mindful while all of this is going on, that he's still cutting off the ring. That's what we're doing. Next, he's gonna throw his combinations. I'm gonna throw a jab. Now he's gonna counter me. So he's gonna throw, boom, throw fours, boom. And then I'm gonna counter, he's gonna go down. So get him used to seeing offense, defense, offense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw, he's gonna counter, and then go low and start raking down threes and fours. And what that's doing is allowing him to get the muscle memory in, in, the, in the heat of the moment to come into the eye of the storm. So throwing the jab, good. And get, get up under these hooks, throw the jab. Very good. Ready? Good. 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 Count it right. Good. That's it. Go ahead. Push. 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 Keep it going. Good. No. Good. There you go. Make sure he's in the right place. That's it. Small. That's it. Small. All right. So now, like I said, the harpoon circuit is where he throw the combination. And what I'm trying to do is keep him at bay. And he's going to throw sixes. Good. Good. Six up top. That's it. Ready? Good. You're on the wrong side of me. Ready? Go. Catch me here. Work. Good. Good. Tough drill, Ray. He has to get it somewhere. This is where you get it. You develop him by building him and creating a fight scenario that will simulate how he's gonna feel on fight night. And that's the harpoon drill. Where he's throwing six, coming up top six. Anytime he gets an opportunity to counter, he maximizes that scenario. And that's it. Let's get to the next drill. Let's make a champion. Peace. All right, so now that you've done that with the spar mitt training, your objective is to see how well that carries over into sparring. This is one of your final litmus tests to see if your athlete is producing the rhythms that is necessary to carry into fight night. And these are some of the secret tips that showing and developing your fighter in a process manner will truly give you those jewels that you'll need in the call of duty on fight night. Let's see what it looks like, spar drills, let's get it popping. So when we say go, what's gonna happen is the guys are gonna go and put it forward and leave it in the ring. 
Mike and George will both be on offense exchanging. What they're trying to do is in real boxing scenarios, how they can transfer those rhythms into sparring. 